Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Kessler, and I'm only here to bring you the finest in card announcements for Age of Overlord. And with each new support for decks in the set comes new possibilities and decisions on whether these cards are good or not. Whether they revolutionize the strategy, fix the strategy, or do things for we didn't know needed to happen or something, I don't know. And now we have Ogdoatic support. Yes, the Snake Graveyard People's Egyptian things, whatever they're supposed to be based on, has new support. And we're going to go look at it and let there be light with the Ogdoatic. The Eightfold Primordial give rise to the living world. So first off, we get Nefer Abyss, the Ogdoatic Overlord. Oh, and by the way, this was all announced while, while I was uh, at work today. So I re obviously, f since I was at work, I couldn't do a video on these. Although, because I really wanted to, I didn't even look at the effects. I only glanced at it. I only glanced at it for a second. I saw graveyard and auto attic in pictures of gold black snake thing. So that's as much as I've seen. But anyway, level 10 dark reptile effect monster 2200 and 3100. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If a monster is sent from either player's hand or deck to the graveyard while this card's in the graveyard, you can special summon this monster. But you cannot special summon monsters until the rest of the turn except reptiles. Okie dokie. If this card special summoned from the graveyard, you can target one monster in your graveyard, except Nefer Abyss, the Octoatic Overlord, special summoned it. Okay, this is just extenders. Hi, Snake Rain. Look, look, Konami's telling you all, play Snake Rain. Come on now, play Snake Rain. Send four to the graveyard. Everybody wants that, don't they? Come on now. Come on now, people. Play Snake Rain. But this card is absolutely fantastic for reptile pile decks and just reptile decks in general. And hey, reptiles are getting new support released in Battle of Legends. So maybe this is just coincidental? Hmm. But anyway, now we move on to Octoatic Dawn of Creation. Quick play. By the way, this art, this art goes kind of hard, I'm not going to lie with you. This art goes kind of fucking hard. But anyway, you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. Effect number one, tribute one, reptile you control. For every two levels that monster had, special summon up to one Ogdoatic token. Reptile dark level 200. You can manage this card from your graveyard. During the main phase, and if you do, target one of your banished reptiles, shuffle that t shuffle that monster to the deck, then set a reptile from your deck to the graveyard. This is also absolutely fantastic. What the hell? What the fuck? You're just getting so many things to send to the graveyard for your Octoatic stuff. I don't know if this fixes up everything for the deck, or if this is a start. This could be a start. Is this mean pure Octoatic will finally become a deck worth playing and not just mix it with like Lay or Reptilian or just make it into a, a uh, Reptile Pile deck? I'm not sure. But this is just a good start of just really good Reptile Extenders. But anyway, because we finally got the third wave of support for the uh, Grand Creator deck. Every deck officially has their third wave support from that set. We, we, we move on to the new cards for Age of Overlord. The next batch of new cards. And I just gotta say, what's up with all this? Just tell me, what's up with it? 
That's right, everyone. Watts have gone new support in 2023. I literally go on Yu-Gi-Oh! Organization just to check if anything new got released or announced. And then I see this. I'm like, oh my god, what? That does not mean Watts are going to get buy bought out, but hey. what support. Bro, this is cool as fuck. Let's get to it. So we got Watuna. Ah, and he's, and he's not just a tuna, but he's also a tuna. Oh my god. Oh, Konami, you sneaky sons of bitches. Anyway, 800 attack, 700 defense. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. If your monster inflicts foul damage to your opponent at the end of the damage step, you can special summon this card to your hand. Excuse me, you can special summon this card from your hand. Inflicts bound, inflicts bound damage to your opponent, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so I was like, wait, how are they going to do that? Then I just see this, I'm, then I just see that this card can attack directly, then I remember, oh. Oh, that's right, Watts can attack directly. Anyway, when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, you contribute in one or more non-tuners from your hand and or face-up field. If you do, special summon a Watt Synchro monster from your extra deck whose souls equal the tributed monster's total levels. Okay then, so I essentially could just synchro from my hand. I mean, it's not treated as a synchro summon, but it's essentially just a synchro summon from the hand. That's pretty damn good. I'm not going to lie with you. It's pretty fucking crazy. A good lock card that doesn't involve a stupid ass lock. Good job, Konami. Good job. Then we got Wat. Wat Horus. Wat Taurus, okay. I had to look up at the card image for a minute. I'm like, oh, okay, it's a Taurus. Level 8 Light Thunder Synchro Effect Monster, 1600 attack, 1700 defense. A Watt Tuner plus one on Tuner Thunder Monsters. Alright then. You can only use the second effect of this card's name each once per turn. This card can attack directly. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, you can shuffle one Watt Tuna from your graveyard and one face of Thunder non tuner you control into the deck. And if you do, special summon a Watt Synchro from your extra deck to accept Watt Taurus. <coughs> All right, so that's just more Watt Synchros to be brought out. Uh, what's that other Watt Watt Synchro that's actually really good? Uh, damn it! I was just literally looking at the pages for Watts on TCG Player. It's not the one from Storm of Ragnarok. I think it's the first one that came out. But all I know is that there's just supposed to be like a really good one. A really good one, but I forget its name at the moment. But this is just good to get out uh, to get out more Watt synchros, and essentially create a, in a way, a field spam. So I like this. I think this is neat. So finally, we got Watt Kingdom, continuous spell. All right, so they got a continuous spell, and a good one, maybe. Don't they have a continuous spell already? It's got a lot of words here, so that must mean it's good, right? Right? You can only use the second effect of this card's name each once per turn. Your opponent cannot activate the effects of any of their monsters in the same column as this card and or one of your Watt monsters that activated when they are normal summon set. Now, the, hold on, let me read this. <coughs> let me reread this in case I read it wrong. Your opponent cannot activate the effects of any of their monsters in the same column as this card and or one of your want monsters that activate when they are normal summoner set uh, when they are normal special summon Jesus Christ what huh they can't activate effects huh okay that's annoying you could target one what monster you control you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except thunder monsters also special summon one what monster with a different name from your deck then lose life equal to the special 
equal to some monster's attack. Well, wild monsters typically have really low attack, so it doesn't really matter at the end. Okay, but overall this card's actually absolutely fucking cracked just because of that very first effect. And that first effect is a uh, continuous. It's a uh, continuous thing since the second one's the only one we can activate once per turn. Now the question is, with this card specifically, this first effect, is this a skill drain? Because Konami loves giving skill drains to legacy decks. Uh, but overall, what do I think of these cards? Uh, well, I don't think this really is supposed to generate any sort of, uh, whatchamacallit, locks that, you, that lots are typically known to do. I think this is just more meant to get out just your synchros. So at this point, your whole strategy is just get out Watt Taurus and any of the other two Watt Synchros and have this guy out, have this kingdom out. That's probably it. Overall, I think this is pretty neat. I think this is absolutely pretty damn neat, and I just think it's really damn cool that Watts have gone support after all these years. After all these years of being neglected since Chaos Impact, fucking Watts have got new cards. And I just think this is I just think this is really damn cool. I just gotta say What's next? Haha, <laughs> get it? What can we expect next from Konami for legacy support? What future is held for the Watts? That I will leave for you to answer. Anyway, these are just my favorite cards revealed tonight just because they're Watts. And the Octoatic stuff is cool and absolutely fucking fantastic. But the ain't no Watts. Let me look at this man. He's just trying his best. Or her. She's doing her best. But anyway, that's all I gotta say. I'm. I did not expect Watts support tonight. Good job on it, Konami. You finally made Watts somewhat playable. Anyway, I'll see you next time.